in the field of pharmacy of course what we are uh, more interested towards is to talk about the drugs that can be used for treating the sars cov 19 because as of today we know that there is no sure shot remedy right remdesivir hydrochloroquine the repurposing of drugs so many things were said you know it was said in the second wave that remdesivir is going to work and uh, you know there was so much of shortage of remdesivir people running helter and skelter in the news also we were seeing that you know people were really uh, you know panic uh, situation was there because they were not getting the remdesivir and you know so many deaths were there of our near and dear ones so that is something that of course uh, you know being in the field of pharmacy it's a big challenge for us and you know it has opened up a whole new era that what we should look into you know and what we should focus our research towards vaccines and vaccination of course is the prime uh, you know thing that is going on globally and uh, even in that area there is so much needs to be done because we still know that even if we have taken the two doses still now people are talking about the booster doses and all you know? so this situation will go on and we really have to find a good sure shot remedy not only uh, covid but there are other diseases as well as which are very challenging enough cancer we know today it still presents a big huge challenge there are many other disorders uh, like alzheimers again you know globally these are all challenges which are faced globally uh, related to healthcare you know that uh, certainly as in the field of pharmacy we have a lot to contribute right so this is something you know uh, we know that uh, something is a boon and something is a curse so in a way like we would say that in some ways this covid pandemic certainly could be a boon because as i said it's a eye opener and we can certainly you know come out with the very good uh, innovations and solutions you know to uh, tackle the global challenges so before actually uh, yes because we are talking about innovation i cannot but stop myself from putting in front of you this example because that will set my path for the uh, talk that i'm going to you know going to be talking about because that will i think orient you towards uh, what exactly i need to Uh, make you understand regarding uh, research and innovation so we know that you know this uh, global teacher prize of 2020 which was uh, announced for a teacher by the name uh, shri ranjit singh disle who is a government school teacher from a small village from the maharashtra solapur district and paritewadi and he made history by winning this 1 million global teacher prize for his efforts to promote the girls education and for the education through the qr coded books the quick response coded books so it is really amazing to understand his story because uh, this person uh, you know uh, she disle in 2009 you know he arrived at a very small zilla parishad school in paritewadi a very small village which is there in the solapur district and uh, when he arrived to the school the zilla parishad school which was a very dilapidated building you know between a cattle shed and a storeroom it is said so you can imagine what the situation was there and he took the task of uh, turning around and brought in several changes and the most important uh, change that he brought about was to make the textbooks available to the local students in their own mother tongue you know so the importance of local language is also being highlighted in the nep 2020 and that is very very important and this person has been doing it you know before the concept of nep 2020 so he brought in uh, the textbooks in the local uh, mother tongue that is marathi essentially and embedded very unique quick response uh, code which could give access to you know all the uh, poems the chapters you know the stories or whatever the assignments were there in their textbooks you know so it essentially it is said that he is the first person in maharashtra to introduce uh, this qr code concept of the on the textbooks 
and he uh, submitted this uh, proposal in 2017 to the state government which introduced uh, this qr coded textbooks for all grades and in 2018 the central hrd ministry in fact announced that all the ncert uh, textbooks would have embedded qr codes and for this in 2018 he has received the national innovation award you know and that is the reason that i had to cite this example uh, in front of all of you uh, one very interesting observation or his remark that he made was that when he received this award was that uh, he said i am a teacher of 20th century uh, who is teaching the students of the 21st century with the syllabus of 19th century and in the syllabus the content or the techniques madam uh, please unmute somehow uh, it is muted ma'am please unmute uh, your your mic has been muted somehow i think oh i am so sorry so since when it has got muted right now madam okay okay sorry so that is what you know the statement that he made was that i am a teacher of the 20th century who is uh, teaching the students of the 21st century uh with the syllabus which is of 19th century have uh, which contains the contents which are of 18th century and now therefore we can understand that what is the importance of innovation even for pharmacy syllabus we understand that the similar we can very much relate to it you know that uh, there are so many things what we had learned or maybe our teachers also had learned in their textbook same things are being continued and we are not able to revamp uh, you know those things so therefore it's a very um, challenging uh, task you know for all of us and uh, he this person has really uh, brought out the noble work of that a teacher can do and in fact he went one step ahead and he shared he said that he will share 50% of the prize money with the other finalist you know because there were 10 finalists who were shortlisted from other countries also so he has gone one step forward and he has really set a example for us and how inspiring this person is you know as a teacher to all of us so therefore i had to you know take this example and put it in front of you at the beginning of the lecture because this is where we need to really salute these kind of efforts and we have such noble teachers in our country and that is the reason that you know nep 2020 certainly the education is the future or the focus it has to be the focus of any country only then the country can really become big so coming to the you know research and innovation trying to set the ground again as to why really we have to look at research and innovation you know this um, need for research and innovation is essentially rooted to the challenges that are faced by the human kind today. the united nations has uh, set in 17 sustainable goals you know in front of us which are required for the development of the globe or the world as a whole so these are the 17 goals which are required to transform our world you know there are several aspects 17 of them are listed here but most important ones we can see that we have to eradicate poverty we have to eradicate the hunger there has to be zero hunger most important is the health and well being of the mankind the fourth listed is the quality education you know this certainly even you know to the most under represented the most under privileged at the grassroots level we have to educate each and every human being on this earth then we have the of course gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable clean energy today energy crisis we know that 
it's going to be a big thing for us you know in the future uh, decent work economic growth then industry innovation and infrastructure you know sustainable cities and communities now therefore you know even the governments or the state governments are putting their focus on smart cities or sustainable city so these are some of the challenges that are posed in front of us and these are essentially what we should be striving to work towards so the achievement of these sustainable goals of development and an attempt to meet these grand challenges requires creative problem solving it requires innovation and it requires research so before we talk about nep 2020 and nrf let us try to understand what these three things are what is meant by creative problem solving what is meant by innovation and what is meant by research so the focus is on essentially reinvent because if we look at our ancient india or if we look at the universities like nalanda takshila that were existing and the researchers or the scholars or you know whatever the knowledge that was existing in ancient india you we had the shishruta we had the aryabhata we had the bhaskaracharya you know we had such eminent scientists and researchers in that era but somewhere in between it has got lost and therefore we need to reinvent and rediscover our traditional knowledge you know and bring it to in front of the whole world and show its application and evidences you know that as a pharmacist certainly i think we are capable enough to contribute in this area so reinvent is what re is standing for research i and b stands for innovation and the third most important aspect what the education now should focus towards is the entrepreneurship and that is what nep 2020 also focuses on that we will look at a bit later on but what i want to uh, you know tell you people now is that it is the research innovation and entrepreneurship that is going to you know make us a more uh you know our country as a global economy superpower you know there are two things that we want to take our country towards making uh, it as an economic power and making it as a knowledge superpower and that is something where we being in a higher education institute or we being in the academic sector education sector we certainly can contribute towards so just to uh, you know bring uh, to the basic of uh, you know this innovate invention and innovation there is always a confusion you know what is an invention and what is an innovation so invention is essentially a first occurrence of the idea for a new product or the process whereas innovation involves implementation of the creative idea or invention for creating value or commercialization of the idea to meet the customer needs and expectations so innovation represents new application of an old concept or a new way of doing the things this examples will help you understand further what is exactly you mean by innovation so there are these three aspects the creativity and the invention and the innovation so creativity essentially just refers to thinking of novel ideas okay so the idea is novel and useful and has value for an individual or a society you know so when can you call an idea as a novel or a creative idea when that creativity is essentially associated with a positive attribute so it has to add some, it should have some value addition for an individual or to the society at large creativity may not lead to innovation that we have to understand and through the examples i will make you understand that whereas an invention is the creation of novel services or products or production techniques and every invention is strongly supported by an rnd whereas the innovation it involves the implementation of innovative ideas which are generated through creative thinking so it puts 
the ideas into action and turns ideas into market of so that is very important so in it every innovation involves commercialization of the invention unless and until the invention comes to the market or is being commercialized we cannot call it as a innovation so all innovations essentially involves creativity uh, just give me a two minutes because so all inventions essentially uh, they involve creativity now what is meant by this uh, creative problem solving and what is the importance of this uh, creative problem solving so we understand that there has been an increasing emphasis on developing creative problem solving skills among the learners of the 21st century and there are several reasons for it first is of course the internationalization of the higher education nep 2020 also focuses on this that we have to internationalize the higher education we have to uh, whatever education is available in the remotest corner of the world each one of us should have an access to that you know of course there is an increasing competition that we are facing you know as the world population is growing overall you know there is going to be a huge competition for each one of us and there are rapid technological developments that we are seeing industry 1.0 2.0 3.0 which was the era of computers and now we are having industry 4.0 you know so this industry 4.0 is where we are talking more about technologies like machine learning artificial intelligence data analytics today it is said that this big data that is available it is considered to be a mine uh, a gold mine essentially you know it they consider it equivalent to the oil you know what oil did to several countries you know the gulf countries made them super rich similarly this data is something if we are able to encash on it it's like a gold mine you know? so there are rapid uh, technological developments that are coming through and of course we looked at those 17 global challenges that are faced by the mankind so the question is obviously how we are going to solve this uh, challenges the world economic forum also has put forth that the top skill needed for the 21st century workforce to succeed is essentially creative is if a person is creative and he is adopting creative problem solving only then it is said that there are chances of being su successful so we know that of the different levels cognitive domains that exist as per the revised bloom's taxonomy you know starting from the basic level of remembering or reconciling or recognizing the or recalling the facts to understanding what those facts means to applying those concepts or ideas to analyzing further evaluation of those concepts and the highest cognitive domain is to create you know and the existing uh, system of education essentially is under criticism why because it does not apply it does not develop this higher level abilities which are there that is uh, analyzing or evaluation or creating our education system currently unfortunately we are not able to cater to these higher cognitive domains most of our education what is examination or assessment based wherein we are just assessing the memory of the student you know through the rote learning whatever the tratta mafaing whatever techniques are there what we are trying to assess is not really his creative abilities or his ability to analyze or evaluate but his ability to memorize and reproduce exactly that is what we are doing and therefore this need for nep 2020 it is said that almost after a gap of 36 years you know the last uh, education policy came somewhere around 1986 you know after that there was nothing in between and 
now it is realized that yes if we want to take india towards a developed nation towards a global economic power towards a knowledge superpower we have to really cater to these you know higher cognitive domains and see to it that how our education system can kindle these domains so as i said that therefore the need for cps is that the existing system of education it has it does not uh, develop this higher level abilities and therefore we have to you know imbibe these problem solving capabilities in the learners whatever the practical work and the project work are undertaken they also do not provide a environment of free exploration and experimentation in solving the real life problem we keep our students confined to the four walls of the classroom or the four walls of the laboratory but we don't expose them to the laboratory of nature or to the laboratory of real life you know and that is where they are going to observe and identify the problems so this results in that the acceptability of the graduates in the real world of work is very low we are not making them industry ready enough we are not making them uh, good enough or capable enough to be as a entrepreneur you know and this is a very serious aspect that all of us should ponder upon so what is essentially cps so as the word itself indicates it involves three components the creative problem and the last component is the solving so creative essentially refers to a new or novel so see just the meaning of creative it just and makes us Uh, understand that something new or novel so it can be a creative product it can be a process or it can simply be a state of be so a creative product is something which is novel which is useful it will be relevant economical elegant or valuable and able to accomplish the recognizable goals and significantly change one's views of the world so that is what a creative product can be so there has to be a value addition certainly when you say that you have developed a new or a novel product which is through the creative thinking the process if it is creative then it is a process of generating new products by transformation of the existing ones so the creative process involves the sensing of gaps or missing elements and then forming ideas or hypotheses concerning them testing this hypothesis and communicating the results possibly by modifying and retesting the hypothesis okay so it you can also be involved in a creative process okay. then the last is the creativity can considered it can be considered as a state of being where creativity is a function of knowledge imagination and evaluation reflecting an attitude towards the beneficial and positive things so what is a problem coming to the next aspect we know that uh, problems can exist essentially at all aspects of our life you know be it economical or a political or a social or any technological problem so at several Uh, levels of our life we can experience problems at each and every uh, state then this problems can be faced by either we as an individual or as a group or as an organization for where we work you know there can be problems related to our workplace or the type of work or the work that we are essentially handling or it can be a societal problem also and there are it is said that the problems can be also of uh, different types it can be a structured uh, problem it can be a semi structured problem or a ill structured problem or it can be a simple or a complex problems so problems as many of us would think need to be eliminated you know but 
problems can also be viewed as a need or a challenge or as an opportunity right so it's not just that problem is there so it is not good but in fact this problem brings because this pandemic itself is an eye opener as i say it has brought in front of us so much of the healthcare related problems you know so certainly it has helps us to identify that there is a need or there is some challenge or here lies an opportunity for us where we can give a good solution to so when viewed as a need it means that there is a gap that exists between what is and what should be right so maybe the actual or what is existing is at a 10% level but what is desired maybe is at a 30% level so there is a gap or a need that needs to be fulfilled or tackled like for example uh, in uh, in our institution or so academic institution higher education institution uh, we know that placements are very important right so this is one very important aspect on which we are ranked also you know those institutions uh, in fact having very good placement they get a very good uh, national or international ranking also so you know we uh, if we say that our college the actual placements that are taking place is only 10% but maybe desirable is 30% or 40% or 50% whatever you know goal you may set for the organization so certainly there is a need to improve the placement by 20% from 10% which is existing maybe we need to improve 20% more to take it to the desirable level of 30% right so this is something that needs to be identified you know what is the need what is existing and what is desirable so the last part of cps is solving so solving essentially refers to finding a solution to the problem or bridging the gap that exists between the desired and the actual state right so creative problem solving is finding creative solutions to the problems and cps is a way of solving problems or identifying opportunities when the conventional thinking has failed this is something very important so it encourages you to find a fresh perspective and come up with innovative solutions so that you can formulate a plan to overcome the obstacles and reach your goals so essentially cps is a proven method for approaching problem in an imaginative and innovative way cps may be uh, defined as a problem solving technique that addresses a challenge or a problem in a very creative and so normally we always uh, are confused between what is creative thinking and what may be critical thinking so essentially creative thinking is something where it makes you go diversion you know so you go into more diversification of the ideas you know your imagination or your novel or creative thinking goes diverse you go out of the box thinking whereas in critical thinking you are convergent in your thinking that is where you start using more of logic and seeking known solution to a problem right so there is a difference between creative thinking and critical thinking critical thinking emphasizes more on the logic and the concepts which are existing you know applying the known uh, principles which are existing and coming out to a solution whereas creative thinking is exactly reverse you keep away all the existing uh, theories whatever are there you just put them aside okay and then you start thinking out of the box apart from what is existing so that you come out with some novel or a totally different idea so but it has been identified that 
we know that you know that it all said and done it's very easy to say that okay we should adopt creative uh, problem solving we should be creative but at the same time we also know that it is extremely difficult to be creative right so there are several blocks to creativity you know our mind uh, doesn't easily adopt to this uh, creative thinking so there are several blocks to creativity which have been identified and the first block is the fear of failure okay so fear of failure is always there in our mind and it makes us avoid to take any risk or indulge in a new activity or a task or thinking right so always we will have that fear no i should not undertake this this is something very tangent and what what will happen if i fail so that fear of failure is always there then the second block is ambiguity so ambiguity is nothing but uh, uncertainty and that uncertainty to many of us uh, you know we are not in a comfortable zone when it is a uh, uncertain situation right so we more like to plan things and be more ordered kind of you know to have a more comfortable situation so for a best example is that if we are going going for any tour or any holiday you know we like always to plan everything make all the reservations beforehand you know we don't want to take any chances that what if i don't get the flight ticket then maybe how i will go whether i'll go by train or whether i will have to take a bus or whatever so we don't want to be in that exploration mode at all we just want to be in our comfort zone so that ambiguity is another block you know to creativity the next block to creativity is essentially sensitivity or touchiness so this is a very serious block in uh, collaborating activities you know and person who is uh, uh, who is very sensitive or touchy enough you know about criticism or rejection you know we uh, th- that person he will not uh, readily approach others for any help or guidance right so they will also tend to look at others with little bit of suspicion you know when they approach for any help or guidance so this is another block to the creativity then there is next block which is the conformity conformity is uh, of course the fear of uh, conformity to the social uh, you know uh, situation or the social norms is where we have the fear of social disapproval you know we are always worried our kya what will the society say if i am doing something like this you know so that in a way you know blocks our creativity because we always have this fear of social disapproval so that is another major block for creativity then there is a resource myopia most important again so this is where that uh, many people they say that oh, uh, you know it's very easy to say all this do research and all that but where do we have the resources you know we many a times we don't recognize our own strength or we don't identify the resources which are available to us you know and this uh, essentially it acts as a barrier for our creativity we don't try to think out of the box that whatever resources may be are available uh, let me see what can be done from that so we never think about it you know so that again is a major barrier to creativity then the next barrier is uh, the starved sensitivity sensibilities so here we know that uh, this is particularly with age you know so the younger faculty may not uh, face this problem but older uh, faculties you know um, they will face this problem because as we grow you know with age our uh, imagination or our use of uh, fantasy emotions all these they get reduced you know due to several uh, pressures because we uh, you know we know that okay i am not this age now i have to become more rational i cannot be responsible or something like that and i have to you know do thing uh, in a particular way only so this uh, many a times uh, because of this we are not able to indulge in any creative thinking and the last block i would say is because of the rigidity so rigidity can occur account uh, because of stereotyping you know 
functional fixedness because we are you know used to uh, you know working in a particular manner and that is what we want to continue doing it you know so uh, you know that rigid kind of attitude is there so all these are the you know parameters essentially that are going to block the creativity and we as an individual have to work on all these things to you know break out these barriers and you know give way to our creative thinking so this process of uh, creative problem solving was given essentially by a researcher lowe in 1996 that what are the different steps that are involved the first is the problem identification and definition as i said that we have to become observant or sensitive enough to identify the problem problem identification is the one major step then the next is the decision making wherein uh, we have to you know come out with different options on creating and selecting the best option out of it and then the last is planning and organizing to do the activity so the problem identification essentially involves identify what is the apparent problem that is the first step then we have to seek and analyze the causes and define what the real problem is in decision making uh, so here is something where actually the process of creativity or creative uh, thinking comes in wherein we have to generate a lot of creative ideas so as i said we have to be divergent in our thinking right so we should not be convergent we have to think out of the box only then we can you know come out with lot of creative ideas and we can have lot of um, methodologies for coming out with the creative idea in the group we can organize you know uh, brainstorming sessions or there are techniques which are called as camper techniques scamper is a mnemonic which stands for s for substitute combine add modify or it can be you know uh, eliminate rearrange so this is the way which where in the creative ideas can be brought in and then we have to select the best possible idea then the last step involves once the idea is selected the option is selected the preparation of the action plan and how we are going to implement that particular idea so that is the last step so there are several benefits of creative problem solving which have been identified like we can uncover the unexplored areas achieve a competitive edge of course we can reduce the stress and uncertainty we can identify and recognize the employees strength whatever are there in the organization explore new possibilities support r&d and new product development and generate and improve the interaction so there are several benefits which have been identified for teachers or team leader essentially we should develop the competence to visualize the indigenous needs creatively this is very important because whatever our local needs or demands are that we should meet first you know and Uh, through using our maybe as i said the traditional knowledge how we can creatively use our traditional knowledge to you know uh, fulfill these indigenous needs then find appropriate solutions which are user friendly and suitable for indigenous user again then we have to acquire the skills of proper need analysis meaningful literature review appropriate problem framework and the study design this is a very important step and most important we have to develop the culture of creative innovation so in an organization the team leaders should be able to build effective teams this is very very important now coming to the next part that is the innovation uh, as i said that invention essentially uh, refers to uh, something which is Uh, you know done for the first time it refers to creation of a new brand or a product or a device right whereas innovation is a act of uh, making the changes you know to the existing product or the process by introducing the new ways or idea so these two are totally different 
for example uh, you know we know that there were several uh, innovations like the light bulb the tube light the cfl leds automobile lights flash bulb the stone wheel you know uh, the first invention was that of the stone wheel then came the cart wheel the carriages then we have the automobile and motorcycle tires in the communication field also the you know the discovery of this uh, telephone which was by alexander bell in 18 uh, around 1877 which was a very big invention whereas later on we have the pagers the cell phone now the smartphones now here you know just as a small task to give us a break uh, some you know i have listed uh, some items here wherein we can classify them as creativity invention and innovation so if it is creativity you just write c if it is invention you write i n b and if it is a innovation you write i n n so there are around 12 uh, items what i have listed and you can just think for yourself whether it lies uh, it can be called as creativity or whether it's an invention or whether it is an innovation for example mechanized car parking is the first then a robo or robotics then you have the driverless car now the polio vaccine then artificial intelligence uh, roof gardens whether it is can be considered as an uh, creativity or whether it is an innovation electricity then telegram the iphones the antibiotics the pcs personal computers and the sofa cum bed so just try to identify as to whether this what of these can you can call them as creativity which is an invention and what is an innovation i will just give you one or two minutes to think for yourself and maybe then those of you you can you know just uh, unmute and tell me as to what you think or put in the chat box you know so which of these uh, you think are the inventions whether you can identify the inventions from this list anybody so when i said amrita said okay then is a invention antibiotics okay electricity okay okay so far come bed is an innovation okay iphone is a innovation okay so quite interesting actually to think about it makes us you know a simple exercise sometimes makes us think also because we take so many things for granted sometimes and then we wonder as to then you know what it is really so just to you know have the answer key for this that mechanized car parking is certainly a creative idea because we know that we are having the crunch of space so mechanized car parking as well as rooftop gardens you know in the cities especially you know where all these uh, development plans these common spaces the corporations are using them for you know building structures and all the open spaces going the gardens going maybe you know the rooftop gardens the mechanized car parking you know the sofa cum bed again in the house you know we are having a space crunch so we cannot afford to have a uh, bed also in the living room and the sofa also so sofa compared obviously it is a 
creative idea. The inventions here, of course, are the polio vaccine, the electricity, the telegram, antibiotics, as rightly some people had answered. So these are all the inventions and the rest all are the innovations. The robo driverless car, artificial intelligence, the iPhone, personal computers, these are all the innovations that we are having seen today. So, in fact, in this COVID-19 pandemic situation also, we can identify so many innovations. COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I would definitely say that it will go down the history not only as a large health and economic crisis, but certainly COVID-19 pandemic has been considered as a driver for digitization and innovation in diverse fields especially in the field of healthcare. So we know that, uh, you know, the mask itself, there are so many innovations we can see in the mask, right? The, this uh, virucidal mask also was something which was uh, developed by some company. This is an antiviral mask, wherein they had embedded or impregnated it with some antiviral substance. And these are all there for the clear mask. You know, we don't we want to, to see the reactions or, you know, completely if you are covering your face, we cannot really relate to the person. You know, so the clear mask is something also which, which has uh, been there. Then uh, DRDO, in fact, has, uh, uh, you know, come out with this Oka mist, which is this dispenser of the touchless uh, sanitizer dispenser. You know, it was developed by DRDO. You know, so this is a contactless uh, sanitizer uh, dispenser. Then robots, uh, which were developed because in the COVID situation, the first wave, second wave was terrible. You know, even the doctors, you know, themselves facing so much of a crisis and shortage of healthcare workers, shortage of doctors, nurses, and also for them to approach the patient was becoming very difficult. So obviously the need of the hour the robots were developed who can go and monitor the patient. Even in a simple thing, like a rickshaw also. You know, this uh, rickshaw wala, the business going down, nobody wanting to go and sit in the rickshaw. So some way or the other, you know, they have put a separator, you know, so that there is, uh, you know, uh, separation of between the person sitting in the back seat and the rickshaw. So Whatever the challenges, you know, as I said, whatever, when the problem is there, then opportunity is there certainly for coming out with a creative solution. So we can see this uh, excellent example in as simple as this, uh, you know, uh, double chamber car sep that, uh, separator, whatever, you know, has been introduced here, screen. So we can see that certainly there are, there is a lot of scope that is there for innovation or creativity. Now, there are different types of innovations. Uh, it is an incremental innovation where small changes can be brought about in the existing product or the process, or it can be a radical innovation where there is a disruptive or a drastic change that has a potential to upset the existing business model. The small example is that of a telephone when we had a landline telephone, okay? From the landline, then a small change was incremental innovation, a uh, hands-free set, you know, where just, uh, you know, you put it for charging, but you can remove that uh, uh, hands-free set and then use it as a telephone. Whereas when this mobile phone came, and especially the smartphone, these are the radical innovation that was brought in, through which is a disruptive or a drastic change, and it has upset the existing business model because now landline telephone, I... Really don't know, maybe only in government offices or somewhere we see those landlines, right? In our homes also, I think we have uh, just uh, put them away now. No one is using the landline. In our field, if, we, if I want to give you an example, you know, in the field of pharmacy, for the compression of tablets, the single punch machine initially was introduced. And then obviously, considering the need that we wanted to have you know efficiency of the process so in the single uh, punch machine how many tablets we can have per uh, hour or per minute so obviously therefore this 
incremental change was made wherein a rotary tablet machine where the speed was improved drastically you know but the process still remains the same of the compression using the dies and punches set but a radical change now has come up because we know that tablets can be manufactured using the 3d printing process so this is a radical innovation that has come in and the first uh, 3d printed tablet drug is now approved by the us fda so here you know you can clearly understand that how things are moving how the technology at what pace it is moving you know so now most of the companies they have set up in their r and d this uh, 3d printing uh, concept as to how they can in fact in the field of uh, medical prosthetic devices or even uh, dental you know uh, replacements this 3d printing is being immensely it finds lot of applications you know and uh, it is said that even in the field of pharma now you know this 3d printing is going to be coming up in a huge way you know so that is certainly a very uh, interesting area of research for all of us so there are several classical models of innovation like you know you have a scientific discovery uh, which we refer to as a invention which goes uh, to the product and through the manufacturing if it is marketing to the see so there is this uh, uh, you know what you call as a science push or wherein the innovation proceeds linearly but there is a demand pool where you know there is a demand for a certain product and that is how the uh, innovation or invention comes in and this uh, innovation originates with the unmet customer needs basically so there are suggestions from the customer the end user and then that is how it comes to the innovation situation and then it goes to the commercialization so coming to the last part that is the research there is there are whole lot of questions in our mind as to what research is about when to do research where to do research who is going to do research how this research is going and what is research if the question is asked then you can see that you know there are several answers you can get to this one simple question that what is research you know there can be different aspect for some research means about publishing papers you know in good journals maybe so for some it is just as creating information you know so for some it is like knowledge but what exactly is research and how we as academicians are going to cater to this so like we looked at the cognitive domains similarly if we have to position the academic research or the very purpose of education or the very purpose of academic institutes is essentially knowledge generation so there are several aspects of this and uh, a famous scientist alvin toffler he said that we are now living in a knowledge based economy where knowledge is the source of highest quality power so today the countries will be rated based on their knowledge power okay earlier like it was like how many uh, based on their uh, you know uh, military status or whatever you know the rating was there but now no more that is you know it is based on how much knowledge generation we are going to give to the world based on that our ranking of the country will be decided so as a teacher we are performing different uh, you know functions maybe there is knowledge transfer that we are doing through classroom teaching we are taking the examination so we are to be as a good evaluator also in an institution there are lot of administrative roles that we have to perform but the most important i would say is that we should not forget that we are a biggest source or creator of knowledge 
and this is something we don't focus our energy towards you know we are doing all these three things very efficiently and for this one we are not giving much time and energy and this is what essentially we should be focusing towards and that is why this nep 2020 so teacher and the research if you consider there are some positive attributes for the teacher who is doing teacher research and there can be some negative attributes so positive attributes of course the teacher who does research he remains updated with the current developments and he can pass on that knowledge to the students so he will also stimulate the research interest in the students whereas a negative attribute is that maybe the teacher can get diverted from his teaching duties you know he may think that teaching is not so interesting and why i should be doing teaching when i am doing such good research so also it may happen that a teacher may just focus on a very narrow area of research so to bring in the broadness of the research therefore nep 2020 focuses on interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary aspects so these are the conventional steps in research which all of you are familiar with right selecting and defining a research problem describing the research methodology carrying out the experiments collecting the data analyzing interpreting the data and reporting it and maybe these you know uh, are the different ways in which each of these steps you are going to tackle i will not go in the details of this but the outcome of this conventional research what we end up doing is yes we want a good publication or we want a good patent out of it and that's the end of the story because we want to write in our api you know what is our output right so we want some good publication in some good impact factor journal and maybe we want some patent which has to be granted to us that's all you know so that our promotion we are sure of our promotion and that's the end of the story but what is the purpose of research that is what we have to understand most important is that it has to generate the new knowledge it has to facilitate problem solving it has to promote the inquisitiveness and it has to improve the quality of life so we should be able to contribute to this very basic aspect as to what challenges and that is why the first slide i showed was the sustainable goals that the united nation has put in front of us it's all towards ultimately improving the quality of life of the human or of the mankind so the holistic approach of research has to be there and we can see that research today there are four quadrants starting from education to research innovation and the business earlier it was uh, like thought you know that uh, knowledge and uh, wealth they cannot coexist right uh ma saraswati and ma lakshmi they cannot coexist but today it is considered that it is not true right so we know that there are different people who are going to be involved in this aspect a teacher who is involved in education a scientist may be involved in the research a technologist or a technocrat in the process of innovation and an entrepreneur is involved in the process of the business right but now if you consider a holistic approach a teacher has to be a scientist he has to be involved in creation he should not be just as a knowledge transfer he should be involved in creation of knowledge that knowledge creation should lead to some innovation and this innovation should lead to some useful product or a solution for the society or for the globe right so therefore we are talking about knowledge creation bringing the products to market we are also bring talking about the knowledge uh, transfer so this innovation ecosystem is something that now i want to bring in front of you that is the new dimension of research so now you will understand why this national research foundation has to be brought in by the nep so there is an idea which has to be taken to the proof of concept and here maybe the scientists are involved in taking the idea to the proof of concept through the research lab whatever the laboratories 
research they are doing. Now, this proof of concept then has to be made as a prototype, you know, and this, the innovator will be involved and through the product development center, the POC, the proof of concept will be transferred as a prototype. This prototype has to be converted into a product. And who is going to do that? An entrepreneur is going to convert this prototype to a product through a startup incubator. Now you can see the new dimension of research that is coming up, right? And this product finally has to be taken to the market. So you can see that every step, the arrows are becoming becoming bigger and bigger. There's a huge leap that is there in the process. And who is going to take the product to the market? There is a business that is involved. And obviously, there has to be an investor. And through our industrial parks, the SEZs, this product can be brought to the market, right? So how we are going to achieve all this? And that is the need for the multi and interdisciplinary research. Okay, so this is something that I wanted to set the ground to you so that you will appreciate the policies of NEP and why this NEP 2020 has been brought into picture now and why NEP 2020 focuses on NR. This startup, in fact, uh, in 2019 itself, the uh, National uh, Innovation and Startup Policy, it was brought out, the guidelines were brought out in 2019. You know, because that was the time when it was realized that the importance of innovation, you know, and it is now said that only those institutes are going to survive who are going to adopt these kind of machinery in their institution. So every institution now is now eager to set up a startup incubator center. Only those are going to survive in the future, which are going to provide this kind of machinery to their students or to the institution. So this research and innovation today, it leads to start setting up the startup incubation centers. The interdisciplinary research has to be there. We have to establish industry academia linkages. We have to have centers in frontier research areas and we should have the technology development centers. So why was the question therefore is that how all this will be achieved? And if we look at the, as our nation, if we look at the research impetus that is given, you know, if you compare the GDP, the gross domestic product of the countries, India has puts in around 0.69% of its GDP towards research and innovation. The United States is putting around 2.8%. Whereas a small country like Israel, we know that it's you know considered as a country of research and innovation today. Israel, South Korea, these countries are putting more than 4% of their GDP in the research. In the Global Innovation Index, if we see India ranks around 52, whereas China is having the rank of 14. So our objective or goal is to bring India at least in top 25. So the question is obviously how we are going to achieve this. And the answer to this is through the National Education Policy 2020. So it is really appreciable that in spite of the pandemic that was set in, in March 2020, the government has brought out this national education policy on 29th of July 2020. So what are its key uh, features of this national education policy? In fact, it is said that it is not a policy, but rather it is a mission. It is a mission to overhaul our education system, it is a mission to revolutionize or energize our education system as a whole and to bring in a change right from elementary to doctoral level, you know. So at every stage of education, you know, it focuses on. And what are the key 
parameters it is going to focus on creativity and critical thinking so it's more about innovation and logical thinking it focuses on collaborative and multidisciplinary research to come out with better or viable solution because we know that a single person cannot handle things we cannot be a researcher we cannot be an innovator we cannot be a technocrat we cannot be a businessman but we should know you know or we should be able to collaborate with these people to bring out with uh, better viable solutions the autonomy and empowerment is something which is very important so overall the nep 2020 focuses on research innovation and entrepreneurship what it says is that don't make your students job seekers you make your students job creators or job providers and that is why entrepreneurship is something very a very important focus of nep 2020 so it focuses on research at ug undergrad as well as post graduate level it also enables the internship to be made available to the different research institutions so the undergrad it is said that it will be of four years with research and for post graduate level it can be one year for a four years bachelor if you have completed four years of undergrad then you just do one year of your post graduation or if you are doing 3 years of bachelor's then you go for 2 years of post graduation and you also have an integrated 5 years of ug plus pg then you can have a 5 years program the phd normally will be for 4 years uh, bachelor's or masters degree now this nep 2020 the focus as i said is on the research because today it is considered that uh, the universities if you look at the institution the academic institute uh, or the universities uh, they are essentially majority of them are just the teaching institutions right that is they are involved in knowledge transfer taking the examination and awarding the degrees to the students but not many are really involved in the good research right however the focus of nep 2020 is to make or empower each and every academic institute to make them as a center of knowledge creation and innovation but the problems what we see here is that as i said that there is less emphasis that is given to research in fact nep 2020 says that right from school level we should put in the vocational skills and the research or creative thinking right from the school level many of the institutions they lack research funding also so the solution to all these problems given by nep 2020 is the one answer to that is through the national research foundation the nrf to fund the universities and the colleges so here it is to promote this high quality multi and interdisciplinary research in all disciplines so the purpose of nrf is essentially as i said that most of the educational institutes they are just the teaching institutions where there is very little or no research and how we are going to bridge this gap between education and research or how we are going to encourage the educational institutions to take up research and this bridge is given by the nep 2020 through this nrf that is the national research foundation so the nrf is essentially act going to act as a bridge between the educational institutions and the research so the goal of nrf is to bridge the chasm between education and research to foster creativity innovation and critical thinking in the mother tongue because the local language is very very important that is one main focus of nep 2020 and to provide quality and equal opportunity of education research and innovation to all so these are the objectives of nrf funding of competitive peer reviewed grant proposals facilitating research at academic institution funding of research infrastructure increasing of india's role and participation in key areas of national and global importance 
acting as a liaison and coordinating amongst the researchers, support the development of next generation of researchers, supporting various activities and initiatives for participation of women and other underrepresented groups in research, creating a central clearing house for analysis of information and data, recognizing outstanding research and progress and serving essentially as a high level think tank for coordination, short and long term planning of research in the country and for the recommendation of key policy initiatives on research and innovation and education. So this NRF essentially is going to be a pool of all these different funding agencies, right? So they are going to all come under one umbrella now that we have, you know, so many different funding agencies that are existing, be it in the government or in the private sector. So all these will be pulled under one umbrella and that is NRF. And what it will lead to is this NRF essentially will identify the national mission projects essentially. And this funding of the national mission projects will lead to the establishment of centers of excellence. And these centers of excellence will essentially comprise of world-class researchers, which will contribute or give direction to our academic institutions and to our country as a whole to become the next superpower. So this process is essentially, as I said, coming, the first step will be to fund a competitive peer-reviewed grant proposal and to facilitate research. There will be NRF professorship at universities and colleges each year across all disciplines. There will be identification of projects of national importance, which are called as national mission projects, which will lead to the establishment of center of excellence. And there will be thousand doctoral and thousand postdoctoral fellowships. In fact, the revenue outlay or the budget is <laughs> said to be around some 20,000 lakh crore rupees you know, for this NRM. So from academia to society, the role of faculty is very important now. As I said that we as academicians, we should not consider ourselves just as transferring the knowledge, but we should be involved in the process of innovation. So education, research, innovation, and ultimately this innovation, we should be able to give back to the society. This education, the purpose, as we said, is to essentially bring about a transformation in our society. And this can be brought about only through the field of education. So this is something what I came across. The, some of the you know, big uh, academic institutions in our country, the IITs, the mission or the vision statement of IIT Bombay is said to achieve recognition for innovation, entrepreneurship, and research excellence through industry academia collaboration. So that is the vision statement that the IIT Bombay has put forth. You know. Finally, the last slide is that if we have to really be involved in research, we have to understand these five Cs. We have to be creative. We have to be involved in creative problem solving. We have to have a critical thinking. We should have a good communication. Yesterday itself, you had a very good talk on, you know, communication aspects and what is its importance. We now understand and we cannot work alone to come out with a viable or sustainable solutions, you know. And therefore, we should be able to collaborate between us and we should be able to convince ourselves and to the society that yes, this is something which is going to be beneficial. So these are the five C's. The convincing power is very important today because ultimately through the NRF also, if they are asking for research proposals, you know, our proposal has to be convincing enough to get the requisite funding, right? So ultimately this convincing power has to be developed in us that yes, we can you know, put forth a very convincing proposal such that it can get funded. So this is what Albert Einstein said that if we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, right? So therefore, you know, 
uh, it is always going to be an unexplored era and we need to really identify as to where the real problem lies locally for our indigenous situation and we should come out with indigenous solution that is what even the government focuses on that is to be atmanirbhar so lastly i would like to acknowledge my institute pune college of pharmacy for you know providing with to me ample amount of opportunities to giving me the platform you know to explore myself and for the support of all my research scholars you know for i would say uh, encouraging me in you know and supporting me in whatever i am doing and lastly to ni triple dr as well as the asd for this stc program so thank you all of you for listening so we know that how the indian namaste has become in the covid situation again it has become very popular across the world you know again this through this covid pandemic situation something which has now the world recognized that india namaste is the best way of greeting each other you know so thank you very much i would say for your patient listening and uh, thank you ma'am uh, definitely it was an enlightening presentation for all our young learners and the session is now open for uh, any doubts or questions that you have Uh, you may unmute yourself or send your questions uh, to the chat box and please remember please do not hesitate in asking any questions uh, get enlightened by such an eminent uh, speaker varsha ma'am because uh, you might think that uh, your question might be irrelevant but it may benefit 10 or 20 of other listeners also so it is my humble request to all the participants of this uh, session please uh, get your questions or doubts cleared by our eminent uh, speaker varsha ma'am so that others may also be benefit questions please anything which you want to uh, get some more details or uh, any clarification you want to have this is the best platform to get the doubts cleared or if you want to ask something so please go ahead please do not hesitate because it might benefit others also right am i audible sir yes please yes. please you are audible please continue yeah good morning to all uh, i must say whatever the varsha madam has delivered it is very relevant and uh, very you can say uh, valuable for us and i am very eager to know the references which madam has uh, uh, taken to generate all this valuable data and the presentation and uh, additionally i want to say madam lecture is very you can say revolutionary in terms of thoughts and uh, very very relevant to the said subject that is nep 2020 thank you thank you very much ma'am thank you uh, very much amul for your appreciation yes certainly actually nep 2020 is something which yet even i 100% i cannot say that i know everything about it right because it is such a huge uh, document rather and you know there are uh, so many aspects that we really need to study them properly and how we are going to implement it because it's again a process it is this uh, changes you know it will be in small steps only that we can bring in immediately we cannot adopt to all this uh, whatever guidelines given by nep 2020 or this nra also incrementally small step one step at a time that is how we are going to bring about the change so for which we should gear up ourselves up, you know we should prepare ourselves for that and start thinking as i said that you know this our creative thinking abilities we should be able to nurture so that we can move in the right direction so thank you very much ma'am 
rightly mentioned, uh, ma'am. And uh, with permission of ma'am, I would just like to add a few things that uh, I read somewhere that uh, if you want to demolish a country, there is no need of war. You just demolish the education system of that country and it will be, uh, remain demolished for years to come. So uh, let us understand the value of education or the Absolutely. responsibility that uh, all of us uh, are having. Because mm -hmm. ma'am has rightly mentioned that this is the era of multidisciplinary research. So it's time now to pull up our socks. We should not uh, think that we are at the fag end of our career because now it's time not to treat us at ourselves as teachers, but to treat us as mature learners because we are handling the teenage learners. So right. it's time to get ahead and uh, with, the, with the benefits of NEP 2020 and such a good presentation by ma'am on NRF. So thank you, ma'am, for this uh, Wonderful session, enlightening. Many of the things were uh, new to me also, and uh, for the uh, our participants also. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, thank you, Dr. Gupta. I think we are taking away the time of the next talk. So already they have flashed the bouquet and the certificate. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. <laughs> because yes, the next talk is in the pipeline, right? So thank, thank you, you over, once again. Over to Dr. Jain. Yes, thank you. Thank you, madam. And thank you, Jain sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to all the participants. Thank you.